what's up everyone welcome back to tea's time tj thanks for tuning in uh today uh we're trying to make a quick well quick video for you anyway i'm not gonna try to talk too much uh but today's video we have a 2012 uh, toyota camry we're gonna do a uh, brakes uh all four corners uh we got pads we got rotors uh possibly i probably will bleed the brakes depending on the person if they have some more uh, brake fluid with them i'll change that and then also this might be a video of a how-to for somebody who's never done their brakes before uh this isn't my vehicle it's somebody else's vehicle uh they're kind of interested in possibly learning how to change their own brakes uh so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna start and i like i might save one corner for them uh, so if they make it back by then like i'll just record uh them doing the brakes uh, just so you can see like anybody could do it if you just have time patience the right tools of course and just some right guidance and just being able to want or being willing to uh try uh so let's get started i'm gonna get it jacked up in the air we're gonna get your tires off safety first jack stands if you're working under a vehicle even if you're not under a vehicle uh make sure it's uh secure up in the air so you can work safely don't hurt yourself don't kill yourself so I'll see you in a bit. We have our lovely assistant slash installer today. This is for the first timers. Just to show you that first timer can handle their business and get their brakes done. Yeah. So we got the car up. It's on jack stands. We put a tire under it for safety. Uh, we also do have our jack under there also holding it up. So we have a lot of safety precautions taken. Uh, but today we got to get the rotors off. We got some warp waters and these pads. If main thing is the water. Uh, the warpage of the rotors, you get pulsation coming to a stop. Uh, so we're not just gonna replace rotors. When you got warped rotors, I re replace the brake pads too. Like it's cheap enough these days to just get everything swapped out. Uh, but we're gonna see if a first timer could do their own brake pads. So I already did the back. Uh, we gotta do the fronts now. She finally showed up. We gonna get this Don't done. Do do <laughs> uh, you wanna say anything? Hello. Hello, okay. So we'll call her RC. So, okay, the Gober parts, I'm going to do a little walkthrough real quick. We have our caliper right here, caliper mounting bracket. We have a rotor. Uh, to get the rotor off itself, like you're just doing a rotor, uh, you could just uh, pop off the bracket itself. So you have, uh, there's four bolts that need to come out uh, for your caliper and then for the mounting bracket itself. So we got, uh, I believe, a 14 millimeter and then a 17 and that should be all you need and these are the tools we're going to use we got a breaker bar i like to use a 3 8 uh power tool kind of helps make life a little easier uh but the breaker bar is to break it loose just because there's not a lot of space back there to break these uh mounting bolts off so uh yeah we're about to have at it and then so first things first i would take that and just to break those loose and I already have it set to uh, go in the right direction. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. Hang out down. Yeah. All the way down. Yeah. Right, put it upside there. There okay. you go. Out. Ooh. And then you might have to actually hit it. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. So you're gonna wanna keep it on there. Hold that and then hit it with that side. Like hit it hard. Hard. <laughs> Don't hurt your hand. All right, hit the button. See if it's got enough torque. Nope, gotta hit it again. Oh, it's actually spinning right in there. So you need to probably another wrench on there. Yeah. So we're going to need more tools. Uh, so if it doesn't, there's like another, there's a slide pin in here. Like if that doesn't have like a little piece on the caliper itself that holds it in place, you have to throw a wrench on there. So I need to go grab a wrench that fits on that. All right. So you're going to beat down, but you want to put pressure going the opposite way on the wrench. Oh, and there you go. Yeah, Ow. yeah. And now you can press a little button if you want to, just a little bit. We gotta loosen everything else first, but that's all right, that's good. So we're gonna go through and loosen everything else, like so. Oh, oh, is that blood? No, okay. <laughs> I was about to say, bring some band-aids. And we're gonna see if this one needs to have the short wrench in there also. 
Yeah, that might have been it. And you can also you lube up, lube up your sliders also when you get everything broken up. But that's good. You got that loose. So the big bolts now, the harder ones, you're gonna disconnect your uh yeah your mounting bracket for your caliper. So it's just finding the right angle and make sure you get the right bolt. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, look at you go. Yeah, get that aggression now. <laughs> Jeez. There you go. And then loosen up the bottom one, and then we're gonna try to use power tools for uh, the rest. Uh, since you can't get an impact in there, you have to break stuff loose. Uh, we are using our nice little extension Milwaukee over there. Uh, that's what we're gonna use to get everything off once we get everything loosened. straight on there so you don't round it there you go so the rest could be done with the power tool okay all right so all so the way off the, yep all the way off all right that's cool and then the bottom one Oh, uh, uh, don't don't take off your uh, that's your brake line right there, but uh, make sure you get the right one. There you go. Make sure it's on there flush. Cool. cool. You need another glove. You just ripped your little finger. Just and then. Uh, yep, but you want to change over the. And you want to make sure and keep all your bolts and hardware where you can find them. You won't lose them. Take off your caliper, and you want to make sure you don't have it hanging from your brake line. So you might have to take off this 10 millimeter, but you might be able to just bend it back where it could hang on the axle. So it pulls straight out. This whole thing? No, just this or part. Just this there you go. Don't drop it. Oh. God. And this is what we're going to use to keep this out the way. There we go. thing comes out and you got to remember exactly how those pads go on there so your pads look good if anything you just got your you like to get on the brakes and yam on it so you got yeah, yeah. Some, some warpage uh yeah so the reason why we change these when you come to a stop you feel like that pulsation that's warp rotors uh so when we do ro warp rotors i like to just change pads and rotors at the same time since so you got to take it off anyway and you never know if the warpage overheated pad problems cracking but we're just gonna replace everything while we're at it so we got rotors we got pads uh so we have the bracket off you do have to remember when you put these pads in the orientation of the pads and they have these little spring clips that help push the brake pads out away from the rotor when you're uh not on the brake so they'll just hang up but uh, remember that placement and you do have sliders uh, some pads come with new hardware if they are new if there is new hardware loop those up if not I'll just pop these off and they slide out yep and those are some good looking brake pads yeah 
Yep. And then you have the little hardware in there. You have the little spring loaded. So all this needs to come out and we're gonna clean this up. Uh, that's if you don't have new hardware. If you have new hardware, just lube it up, put them in and take out the old ones. If you have the old ones, just make sure you hit up all the contact spots, clean it up and just put some more lube on there. Uh, but yeah, that's where we're at now. We're gonna get that stuff situated and we'll continue. And before we get ahead of ourselves, we gotta take off the rotor. So is it gonna be a good rotor and come right off? Do or do we have to pop it off? And if we can't pop it off, they do have these hard, these little uh, bolt holes where you could put some screws in, it'll pop it loose if you have the correct size uh, bolt for those. Or you gotta use a hub puller on the rotor and it put it at the center of this axle nut and it should pop that off that's the option i'm gonna go with if this doesn't come off so pull all right so uh let's use the hammer technique you got a hammer right there so i'll hammer it <laughs> so you could do a tap like here on the outside going around uh, you don't want to really uh, like hit on this because this kind of affects like your hub too so I want to bang on that too much but just if you could do like a couple light taps going around if that works cool if not like this is something you don't really want to force off because it could affect your hub and all that stuff so that's why they have the center piece that's usually to pop the axle out but you have an axle nut on here so that'll keep that in place if you threw uh, the hub puller that I have on here the center point will be there we tighten it it'll push pull it off so uh that's what we might need to do for you. Put it in reverse, Terry. <laughs> you gotta remember this way for this. Because it's gonna just hold it. It's gonna twist this way, so, so it's gonna want to want to pull that. Way. Yeah. Ah! Look at that. Wow. Yeah. So good job. So what happens like this gets rusted around it so the rotor doesn't want to come off. Uh, so you could go around, you could clean this up, put any C's on this so you don't have that issue again in the future. So you have to replace it. And that's why I have any C's, copper any C's. Little bit. A little bit. And like I said, you could clean this up, but we're gonna let her just throw the lube on. This is the first time this thing they be like, let me just lube it up. Lube it up. So lube it up, and then you probably want to change your gloves before we start touching you could probably get more Ugh. try to use a different finger you don't want to cross contaminate oh. my uh, my anti-seeds you might got a little too much but just enough rub it on and then you're gonna get rid of those gloves anyway yeah good yeah. Sure you get back in the nook and cranny cool all right so that's off so now it's the reversal of all of that we're gonna sit there it's a little dirty uh new rotor new pads get everything cleaned up and yeah so let's get everything assembled and we will be back so we have everything lubed up our new hardware you want to pick up your bracket uh she did a lovely job cleaning them up and re-lubing so that's good uh so first order of business we're gonna get that bracket mounted so we're gonna get that remounted then the caliper comes next and it goes on the far side of the bracket You don't want to put grease on your rotor. We're going to clean it again. Excellent. And your springs. And this is where you're going to have to hold. Like when you put the springs in, you're going to hold it with your hand. Don't let go of it. You gotta kind of multitask and get the caliper back on there. They both face down? Mm-hmm. Or face towards the center. So 
so up for that one. Yeah. Jeez. And keep holding it, push it all. It's gotta be in the hole. No, there you go. Now keep holding it. Now hold with your, with this hand, and then use that hand to get the caliper back on there. Ooh. Oh, we forgot a step. The little pushy gadget thing. You didn't compress the piston in the caliper. We did. See if it'll fit. See if we're lucky enough. I don't think we are. So you gotta compress that. So lightly let go so that stuff don't go flying don't drop it okay now get an old brake pad and now you gotta kind of multitask it's heavy huh or your brake pad. What's up? Here's your brake pad first. Oh yeah? Yep. Okay. Drop it. You end up having to replace brake lines. Some guy actually really have to leave some brakes. The brake pad goes against the piston. And then Don't make sure you don't keep spinning that brake line in the wrong direction. Okay? Yep. And let it do what? No, let, let it rest on top of that bracket. There you go. And now grab with your right arm. There you go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, no, no, no. There you go. It's going to go between right there. Oh, yeah. Yep. And depending on the clamp you use, this is the greatest one. It's bowing as we're pressing, but it is compressing that piston in there. I'll hold that. And that should probably be good. <laughs> yeah don't forget to compress that piston and make sure you don't twist your brake lines when you are uh before you even worry about those pins make sure that brake line isn't twisted like going the wrong way yeah you're good right there looks like my other spring popped off right there oh, thank you they should probably paint those like orange right. neon colors And then like never put your legs under a car. Well, you can because you got jack stands. If you just My have like a jack and stuff like that, make sure it's safely secure, but it's good. And we got a tire under there too. So if it did fall, the tire is going to catch and save your appendages. Ah! Why don't you get that mounted on that first so you can use both the hands. There you go. Yeah. Bottom one is in. Keep your hand on it. There you go. T. 
take your left arm, left hand, grab the caliper over yourself, and you want to get those around it. There you go. And now, little bolts. Put the top one in, and then you'll be good to go, and it'll hold itself in place. Button. All right, do the bottom one, and we're gonna have to put that 17 millimeter on that slide bolt just to keep it in place when we torque that down. And that's it. Complete it. And bada boom, bada bing. The rotor, the pads, they're in, they're installed. Her first time. Any thoughts? Um, I'm gonna have one strong arm tomorrow. But yeah, not bad. Not bad. On my first go round. Okay, so it is possible. Uh, just take your time, patience. It helps if you have somebody to show you. Pay attention, take your time, have patience. Uh, but it's not that hard, it's pretty straightforward. And we definitely, we need to go around and just clean the surface of the rotor also before we finish. And like I said, Andy sees around this little hub right here just to keep that from seizing. And lube up your sliders if they don't move freely. Even if they do move freely, you can do that option and torque everything to spec. Uh, look up your vehicle manufacturer recommendations for that. I did good and tight. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable with that now. I'm not gonna do good and tight on the, the lug nuts though. I am gonna pull out my uh, torque wrench and torque those. Uh, I said I was gonna probably do a bleed, a uh, brake bleed, but uh, I don't have the right adapter for my, uh, what is it, my brake bleeder kit. I don't know if that's the right word for it. But you know what I'm talking about. I have the right adapter, so we're not going to do that. Uh, the brake fluid does look pretty clean already anyway. And when you do uh, compress the piston, make sure you have enough space uh, in your reservoir to catch the fluid because it's going to push uh, brake fluid back. So we probably actually do need to take some out. Uh, so this is the level. It's above like the max. Max line's right there. So we got to take that down. Uh, we'll take that down, uh, put it at the correct level. And we will be good to go. But until the next video, I do appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for commenting. If you have constructive criticism comments, we appreciate that. And until the next one, you got to start somewhere. So we starting somewhere. But anyways, peace. TJ. Bye. Bye. Excellent.